Hey, what's going on guys? This is the first episode of a new series I'm doing called Behind the Cover, and it's a behind the scenes look on how I make each of my covers here on YouTube. And we're starting with What If I Never Get Over You, the cover I did uh, originally that's by Lady Annabellum. Real quick, I just wanna shout out my socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, that'll all be down below. Make sure to follow all those to stay up to date on you know when content's coming out. There's also more content going on there than there is on just YouTube. Make sure to check them out. And last but not least, if you could just hit that subscribe button, make sure to like the video too. I'd really appreciate it. Let's get into it. So the first thing I always do is kind of think of what direction I want to go in with the cover. Some of them I'll do, if you've seen in the past, I'll do a fully produced with drums, bass, electric guitar, all that. Um, other covers I'll just do straight acoustic guitar, nothing else. Um, so that's the first step, is just to figure out what direction I want to go in. This one, the inspiration actually came from a performance they did for Vivo. It was a live performance and it was really stripped down. It just had acoustic guitar, bass, and there was some electric guitar in the background. I didn't end up recording any electric guitar for this one. Once I got done with the bass and the acoustic guitar, I just really liked the way it sounded. The next step is I kind of figure out, you know, what, what equipment I want to use, what guitar I want to use. For this one, just to pick up on the chords and stuff, I just picked up my orange wood. This is the Dana Mini, so this is a travel size guitar. And typically this is just the one, like I'll write on this sometimes, but for this cover I actually just really liked the tone when I started to just mess around with the song. And so I decided to record with this one. And all of my acoustic guitar tracks I record with my uh, Behringer B1 condenser microphone. It's a large diaphragm microphone. It just has a really nice tone to it as opposed to doing like a, a direct line into the guitar. That sometimes doesn't always sound great. So I just do the condenser microphone. Works out pretty well. So let's get into it. So this is the acoustic guitar. It's a simple, just downstroke, uh, eighth note kind of pattern, strumming pattern. It's really simple. And so what I'll do is I'll run through the entire song twice. I'll actually record it twice and pan them one left, one right. And it gives this cool stereo effect. So this is just the acoustic guitars. And so that same chord progression is for the intro and all the verses, and then the chorus has a little bit different uh, progression. Similar strumming pattern, um, just a different order. And we'll get into all the effects later on, that'll be towards the end of the video. Um, so after I got through with that, one th the main thing I really liked from the Vivo performance is just the bass, the simple bass line. In the verses, in the intro here, it's literally just... And so I just really like that because when you combine that with the acoustic guitar, it just has a really nice sound to it. And then the bass gets a little bit different in the chorus. It's just a simple whole note kind of pattern. Just in the background. And so this is the chorus. But I really wanted to make the chorus pop a little bit because everything kind of seemed a little flat. So what I did is I just added more acoustic tracks in the chorus and I actually recorded them with a different one. I recorded them with my Fender here. So I recorded a couple on this. And then I did the same panning left and right. Added that on top of the other acoustic guitars and it gave this for the chorus. Just a really more rounded out sound. It makes it makes it pop from the uh, from the verse there. All right, so after that, I recorded the lead vocal, and so this is what we got. What if I'm trying? But then I close my eyes and then I'm right back. Lost in that last goodbye. And after that, it's just background vocals, and that's probably my favorite part of any Lady Antebellum song. This was a little out of my range, but I did my best, and that's this. What if I'm trying? But then I close my eyes and then I'm right back. Lost in that last goodbye. What if time doesn't do what it's supposed to do? And for the background vocals, it's the same thing. I record them twice, pan them, and it just kind of separates. You know, you have the lead vocal that kind of drives home, and then you just have the, the nice harmonies on the side. That's typically what I'll do. Sometimes I'll record more than just two, uh, two recordings. This one just needed two. I thought it was good after that. The only other part I want to highlight is the, the bridge here. I just really like the harmonies in the bridge. What if it lasts forever and never 
and ever I'm trying. You know, not the greatest thing you've ever heard, but it's, you know, it works. Yeah, so the only other thing I added here is there's this part in the original song that's just way in the background. And it sounds like this. Ooh, yeah. Doesn't sound that great, but when you mix it in with everything else. has a nice nice little thing to it all right so for the effects aspect of it the mixing of it I keep it really simple my skills are not that great I take pride in just I'm just figuring it out um, so that's why I record things like these you can see the journey hopefully my skills increase I know me personally I started recording myself like a year and a half ago not all that stuff got posted obviously but just recording yourself it definitely you know it helps you critique the things you're doing really well the things you're not doing so well so you know, hopefully my mixing gets better. I think for now, I think it's suffice. You know what I'm saying? But so everything's pretty pretty much simple, like the bass and all that, the bass line, that's all software instruments. So they already have, you know, pretty good effects on it. For the guitars, I just add compression, some EQ. Um, and that's pretty much it on the guitars. For the vocals, same thing, compression, EQ. And then I obviously add reverb to, to most things. And then a little bit of tape delay. These are the settings. If you know anything about that, you can check out the settings. Same thing for the reverb. I typically add two. I'll add one here. This is the soft plate. It's just a soft plate reverb. It sounds pretty good. And then I'll also do like a, this is medium sweet. And it just, it just has a nice tone to it. So this is what the vocal sounds like. What if I never get over? What if I never get closure? And then obviously in the mix. What if I never get over? What if I never get closure? What if I never get back all the wasted words I told you? Alright, so that's pretty much it. You know, some covers are more complex than the others. This one I like, I really wanted to keep it super simple because the, I mean, the lyrics and the melody and all that stuff just kind of shines through. But that's pretty much it. Once again, if you guys could, you know, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, um, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's a lot more covers, a lot more behind the covers. Um, but also leave comments on things you'd like to see in the future, things I didn't cover that you still have a question about. If you're a producer and you're better than me and you think I suck, you know, be nice about it. But I'd love some advice. Any, any critiques you guys have, I'm always open for it. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you for tuning in. If you want more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit that like button. And I'll see you guys in the next one.